Welcome to another edition of Lakeville's City Council Wrap-Up. During this program, we will highlight the agenda items presented to the Lakeville City Council at their November 20th, 2017 meeting. First highlighted item on the agenda is item number 5C, Fire Department Quarterly Report. And to provide the background information on this agenda item is Fire Chief Mike Meyer. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. I'd like to present the Fire Department's third quarter report. And we'll start with fire inspections that we completed in the third quarter. We had 95 commercial inspections completed, nine new daycare inspections. Our fair home safety visit, we had 72 visits. And with those visits, we did 72 uh, stovetop fire stops installs, along with 144 smoke detectors that were installed during that time. <coughs> fire prevention visits that we had, uh, and this is going back July, August, on the far left that you can see the Little Tyke Safety Camp and Safety Camp, that's a partnership that we do with the Police Department and the Parks Department. The middle pictures at the Fire Prevention Day at Dakota County Fair, so we have a, a number of presentations and displays and the firefighters are out there. And then the far right is the Fire Department open house that we held in October at Station 4. Uh, one new item, the very bottom picture, which is hard to see, but it was a mini house that we built and uh, demonstrated the importance of keeping your doors closed as far as if there's a fire in a house, if you open a door, potential for that fire to spread is much greater if you keep the doors closed. And that's why we want people to sleep at night with their doors closed. Fire prevention visits. Uh, we went with a little different change here. So station tours and visits, we had 350 plus children that we, uh, that we met and adults as far as those visits. The school visits, the 654, that is for what we did in October of going through fire prevention months. So 654 kids throughout the the school district and not just Lakeville but also uh, Apple Valley and uh, Rosemont School District with the new school that they have. We also had three businesses that asked for fire extinguisher training that we went out and conducted that for them. Back in July we had our waffle breakfast and, our, and participated in the Panaprog Parade and this was another record year for us for serving waffles. We had 2100 plus uh, plates or waffles that were served for that day so it continues to get busier for us. Uh, in August, with partnership with the police department, we participated in National Night Out, where we visited 54 different parties throughout the community. Incidents that we had in the third quarter, so I'm just going to highlight the top right picture where you see the truck spraying water. That was an accident on 202nd in Hamburg. It involved a uh, truck that had about 300 gallons of foundation uh, spray in it that hit a car, rolled to its side, caught fire, another car hit that one, so we had two vehicles on fire, uh, four vehicles total involved in the vehicle fire, but uh, the one reason I wanted to highlight the call is that uh, this happened to be a Tuesday morning, so we had two engines from Lakeville down in Abel at training for our live burn. Uh, how our CAD system works at actually Page Farmington and our station two, because those were the closest two, so not, it was pretty close obviously to downtown, but yet because we were busy, it brings in other stations, how our systems work and how we rely on uh, our neighboring departments to help out when we're, we might be away for training. Looking at our call numbers, you can see from uh, 16 and 17, from July, August, and September, we're, we're pretty close in call numbers. And just remember that the 2015 numbers are lower, and that's when we added the duty crew program to this. Looking at year to date, though, uh, a little bit different. So 2016 to 17, we've seen an 8% increase in our call volume. Our duty crew program uh, continues to grow. We have about a 75% fill as far as firefighters signing up for shifts Monday through Friday during the business hours. Uh, during that time in the third quarter, they responded to 133 calls. You can see their response times there. Uh, and then the call volume or the calls that they are responding to in the right, uh, medicals tend to be the majority of the calls that we do respond to. Breakdown of call types for the, as us as a department. Medicals, again, are our number one calls that we do respond to, followed by good intent calls and false alarms as uh, two and three. Uh, one thing I'll just highlight on the fires, you see 20 fires that we responded to. That's a pretty wide range of fires. That is vehicle fires, house fires, grass fires. Uh, so it's not just, when you think of fires, it's not a structure fire, house fire. Some fitness and uh, public safety foundation partnerships that we completed in the third quarter. Uh, the top right or left picture, excuse me, is a Ragnar relay where 12 firefighters signed up and we ran a 20 or 200 mile relay from Winona to St. Paul. Uh, the bottom left picture is uh, we started a program with firefighters and their spouses to do yoga at the station. 
So we do that once a month. And then the other pictures remaining are from the lights and sirens glow run that we held at station four. Uh, we exceeded our numbers. I think we had 250 plus runners or walkers signed up for the event, so a very successful event. August 14th, we started six new firefighters, three at station one that you can see, one at station three, and two at station four. Uh, they've completed their medical training, so they've completed their certification for that, and they're about a third of the way through their fire uh, training. That completes the third quarter report. I want to thank you for your dedication and support to the Lakeville Fire Department, and I'll stand for any questions. Next highlighted item on the agenda is item number seven, public hearing on the 2018 Street Reconstruction Project. And to provide the information regarding this agenda item is Public Works Director Chris Petrie. Uh, before we open the public hearing, uh, I wanted to just briefly go through the 2018 Street Reconstruction Project uh, with a few slides for background information as well as a few where do we go from here. So first off, the project location, uh, you can see based on the uh, slides in front of you, I apologize, the maps are rather small, but on the northern uh, uh, or the top of the map is County Road 46 or 160th Street on kind of the westerly side. Um, you can see is Ipava running, running north and south. We'll see if I can, mouse can be right there. And then as we go over here to this other map, this is Ipava Avenue here, and this is 175th Street, just to give everyone an, an idea where these project locations are. So background, um, we share this every year just to remind folks um, what Lakeville's pavement management program is all about. And, our city streets are all rated based on their condition and information from that is used to develop our city's capital improvement plan and we started doing this um, back in 2009. Of course streets were rated before that but we really developed this plan starting in 2009. Uh, project background, the city council authorized the preparation of a feasibility report for this project on July 5th earlier this year that was following a neighborhood informational meeting uh, that we had at the end of June. And then the public hearing ultimately was ordered by the City Council uh, on October 16th. So what, what's included in this project? Street reconstruction, uh, that includes pavement reclamation. That's not just simply milling and overlaying the surface, that's reclaiming the entire surface into the subgrade. We also have spot curb and gutter replacement, uh, and then storm sewer enhancements and uh, stormwater basin maintenance and some other things that occur with the project. This is fairly consistent, uh, at least the scope of work and what we're proposing to what has been done in the 2016 and 2017 street reconstruction project areas. We also are doing some water system improvements that includes cor corrosion protection uh, to the existing iron water main pipe uh, based on the soil types here, specifically in that or this area, we've done soil borings. They're corrosive in nature. That's not harmful to anyone. What it's harmful to is the iron pipe and it prematurely uh, erodes away at the pipe where we have more water main breaks and those sorts of things. So by doing corrosion protection on this water main, we're extending the useful life of the existing system that's in place instead of simply replacing it. So project costs and financing, they estimated total project costs based on the feasibility report are $8.881 million. You can see it broken down how we fund this. This is based on our uh, street reconstruction um, assessment policy. City CIP funds are at $4.5 million. City utility funds for the water and sanitary sewer improvements that are not assessed are at 1.3 million and the special assessments are just a little bit more than $3 million. So for everybody in attendance and for the council, as a reminder, our city assessment policy for street reconstruction is project costs are assessed at 40% of the project. So 60% of the share is picked up by our city CIP funds and the general tax levy, while the remaining 40% are specially assessed. This includes only the street and storm sewer improvements um, it does not, and you can see it in the second bullet point, include anything <coughs> related to water main, sanitary sewer, stormwater basin, <coughs> or storm sewer, water quality manhole improvements. Those are all financed by, by separate utility funds. And only properties benefiting from these improvements are to be assessed. Um, our assessment policy is based on a per unit basis for properties zone single family use, 
duplexes townhomes, which we have some in this project, are at a half uh, single family unit and their um, commercial uses are base, assessed based on a front foot basis. I will say related to the single family units, all properties throughout the whole project, those maps that I've shown would be assessed at the same unit rate regardless of what type of roadway you live on and, and some other things. That has been a policy decision of the city council uh, since the inception of our street reconstruction project or program, excuse me, so that costs are equally distributed across all areas of the project. Um, corner lots, only one unit is assessed. That We get that question a lot. Do you get assessed twice if you're on a corner lot? Uh, but it's uh, for either the side or the front, and it's typically determined based on driveway location, location house orientation, or past assessments. So the estimated assessments are uh, estimated at $4,341 uh, per single family unit. Uh, commercial or public use properties are calculated based on rev residential unit equivalents and that's all contained within the feasibility report. So assessments, this hearing tonight isn't, isn't about the assessments because this is just the estimated amount based on the feasibility report. This, this uh, public hearing and this meeting tonight is about the, how valid the project is and should we move forward with the project. The assessments um, will actually be considered at a separate hearing after bids are received and open and assess, actual assessments calculated and that's scheduled to occur at, on April 16th, 2018. Uh, deferments are available for senior citizens and disabled persons. Um, property owner comments, uh, thus far, short of a couple uh, additional comments and questions I received today um, that I didn't get on this presentation, we've received approximately 20 uh, comments by phone or email prior to the public hearing. Most comments uh, are related to assessments, which is, is pretty typical, and, and mostly about terms and process. Uh, so the project schedule, uh, again, the council author set the public hearing back in Oct on October 16th. We're here tonight uh, holding the project public hearing and looking for the council to order the project following that hearing. We would expect to open bids and compute the assessments in March of 2018, uh, followed by the second meeting in March, declaring the costs and setting an assessment hearing on March 19th, 2018. And then as I mentioned, we would look for the assessment hearing as well as uh, the council considering an award of a con construction contract at your April 16th, 2018 meeting. Construction would begin as we have uh, based on weather, but <coughs> typically late April, early May and continue into the fall of 2018. And then assessments would be certified to the county uh, in November, 2018. So with that, I, I'd of course be happy to answer any questions, but uh, recommendations from the, the staff is to conduct the public hearing and then consider the resolution in front of you ordering the improvements and authorizing the preparation of plans and specifications for this project. Item number seven was approved by the Lakeville City Council. Next highlighted item on the agenda was item number eight, public hearing on the 2018 Kenrick Avenue reconstruction project. And once again, to provide the background information on this agenda item is Public Works Director Chris Petrie. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Very similar presentation uh, to the one you just heard. So I'll go very quickly, but I wanna be respectful of those that may be in attendance uh, for this one as well. So this is the Kenrick Avenue reconstruction or improvement project. Uh, this extends, you see the maps in front of you. Uh, the, the map on the left side of the screen is the northern portion of Kenrick from the Burnsville uh, border with Lakeville heading south. Uh, it heads south as you move to the right side map, just south of, of Fleet Farm there to give you a bearing on, on what, what this project consists of. Um, again, I talked about this already, so I'll spare you, but of course, uh, dating back, this fits within our pavement management program. Uh, same type of background and timeline as we just talked about with the 2018 street reconstruction project. The council authorized the feasibility report on July 5th. A public hearing was ordered at your July or October, excuse me, 16th meeting. Um, street improvements, uh, similar to what we just heard, but a little bit different because this is a collector roadway for us. 
So pavement reclamation, the same situation, not just milling on overlaying the surface, complete reclamation. The one difference here from our street reconstruction, based on our evaluation and inspections of the curb, this would include complete curb and gutter replacement along this entire stretch of the roadway because of the amount of deficient curb. Um, we also have some sidewalk along the roadway, so there is spot sidewalk replacement, and there also is some storm sewer enhancements that need to take place along this corridor. Um, water system improvements. We'll talk in a minute about corrosion protection, but there is some water main replacement that needs to occur at 167th Street um, based on maintenance history in the area. We did some of that work actually right up to Kenrick and actually extended into Kenrick. This year it's just to the south of the Harley-Davidson dealership and Moto Primo. Um, we did some of that work this year as part of our 2017 street reconstruction project, but just a little bit of replacement of water main there, and then for the rest of the stretch of the um, water main, we'll be continuing with the uh, corrosion protection that I talked about earlier as well. Estimated project cost for this project is $2.961 million. City CIP funds are $2.154 million. Utility funds for that water main replacement uh, and some of the storm sewer or work is $227,000 and special assessments for the project is $578,000. Uh, we talked again about the city assessment policy. However, what's different here is most are commercial businesses, of course. So project costs are still assessed at 40%. However, they're prorated to reflect the accessible front footage only include street and storm sewer improvements, <coughs> only benefiting properties uh, from the improvements are assessed, and water main and sanitary sewer improvements that I talked about a few minutes ago are not assessed as part of the project. Again, this is assessed on a front foot basis for property zone commercial or public use. Uh, these are accessible lots, or the accessible lots are determined based on the driveway location, building orientation, or past assessments. So estimated assessments for the project are estimated at $77.44 per front foot. Um, this is for all commercial and public use properties. Assessments, same as our previous meeting, again, would be considered at a separate hearing on April 16th, 2018. <coughs> And property owner comments, uh, city staff following our neighborhood meeting and once this uh, letter went out, the notice of the public hearing, we received approximately five comments by phone or email prior to the public hearing. I did receive one more today uh, from the, the uh, mobile home community with a few questions that's along Kenrick. But again, most uh, comments were in regard to project schedule in specifically with this group because of the, the retail nature of their businesses and also assessments, terms, those sorts of things. Uh, very similar project schedule as we saw before. The one thing I would point out though is when we get down to construction, uh, June 2018 through November 2018 when we just talked about the street reconstruction, we talked about an April, May start date. Following our neighborhood meeting and a number of the businesses that attended that meeting, uh, we received feedback that it would be very beneficial if we could hold off on starting construction until sometime in June or late June, possibly even July, to help facilitate kind of their spring business, if you know some of the businesses along there. Um, and we, we believe with the project schedule we can accommodate that. So that's what we have in front of you here. We'd still go with the same schedule uh, for bidding and preparation of plans and specifications, just hold off on starting construction until uh, June or early July. Same thing, certifying assessments in November of 2018. So with that, staff's recommendation uh, is to conduct the public hearing and then consider a resolution ordering these improvements and authorizing the preparation of plans and specifications and advertisements for bid. And with that, I'd stand for any questions. Item number eight was approved by the Lakeville City Council. Next highlighted item on the agenda was item number nine, Cedar Crossing Second Edition. And to give the information regarding this agenda item is Planning Director Daryl Moray. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. I will be brief. Um, as Mr. Johnson mentioned, this is a preliminary plat of 15 single-family lots and one outlot. 
It also includes uh, in your actions before you this evening a comprehensive plan amendment to re-guide the property from medium high density residential to low medium density residential. That area is shown here on this exhibit uh, and that will match the land use guiding for the Cedar Crossings first phase development. And in conjunction with that would be a rezoning uh, from RM uh, two medium density residential district to RST2, uh, again, to match the Cedar Crossings plat that was approved uh, last year. And what I have here, I got uh, my staff to put these two plats together, uh, and I think this will <coughs> help, especially given uh, Mr. Johnson's presentation. He mentioned the triangle that is Cedar Crossing second edition which includes one cul-de-sac street with the 15 lots around it, uh, an outlot for stormwater management at the south end. Everything that's outside of that uh, orange highlighted triangle is the first Cedar Crossings <coughs> plat, again, that was approved last year. That's 108 single family lots. Um, you can see the connection uh, to Cedar Avenue just to the north of here. Uh, the property, again, as he had mentioned, is constrained uh, by a wetland complex, creek complex to the west, which is actually in an outlot of, of the original Cedar Crossings plat. And then there is a regional pipeline utility easement that runs along Cedar Avenue to the east, again, further constraining the property further, uh, making it difficult to get a more medium density product in there, thus the request for the comp plan amendment and the rezoning. Uh, all of these applications were considered by the Planning Commission uh, at a public hearing at their meeting on November 2nd, and they unanimously recommended approval. There was no public comment at that public hearing. The Parks, Recreation, and Natural Resources Committee also reviewed the preliminary plat at their November 1st meeting and, again, unanimously recommended approval. As such, staff is recommending approval of the preliminary plat the comprehensive plan amendment and the zoning map amendment rezoning the property and adoption of the findings of fact. And I can stand for questions. Item number nine was approved by the Lakeville City Council. Next highlighted item on the agenda was item number 10, Pleasant Hill. And once again, to provide the background information on this agenda item is Planning Director Daryl Moray. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, again, I will try to be brief on this item as well. Uh, preliminary plat and rezoning are the two applications that are before you this evening. This preliminary plat's a little bit bigger than the one prior. This is 113 single family lots uh, and four out lots. The, uh, before you is showing the property, it's 80 acres in its entirety. As Mr. Israelson said, it's bisected by what will be the extension of 179th Street, which is a future <coughs> county road. Uh, and the south side is where the preliminary plat is proposed uh, before you this evening. <coughs> On the north side, there is a ghost plat that identifies a possible layout of the uh, lots to the north. Now, the request is includes a rezoning of the south half of the property, uh, which is showing on here. The proposed ordinance uh, that would rezone the property would be from RS3 single family to RS4 single family. So basically 80 foot, five foot lot wide lots to 70 foot wide lots. And part of the reason for that is that would then pretty uh, closely match the lots that exist to the south in the city of Farmington um, in their per particular plat. So the request is to change that to RS4. The north side of the plat, which is basically that area north of 179th Street would remain zoned R. M1. Uh, as you can somewhat see, although I didn't highlight it here, the proposed plat is to be developed in four phases. Mm -hmm. um, in the first phase is included the extension of 179th Street uh, to the east to connect with Pilot Knob Road. There is a little piece of that street segment that is outside of the boundaries of the plat that is adjacent to the Autumn Meadows plat to uh, the west. The um, 179th Street will be built uh, by the developer uh, in its entirety. They will be reimbursed by the county basically for the portion that's over a major collector street segment uh, through the development. The part that's adjacent, or excuse me, that's within Autumn Meadows that's to the west, that's outside of the plat boundaries, the city has a cash escrow that was collected with the Autumn Meadows third edition <laughs> development 
that'll help reimburse the developer for the cost of that segment, which is approximately an eighth of a mile. Um, the developer hosted a neighborhood meeting for this project um, in July. There was approximately 27 people in attendance. The two major areas of concern uh, at the neighborhood meeting was uh, the tree stand that sits along, mainly along the south side of the plat, adjacent to the homes in Farmington. And there was also some residents from the Autumn Meadows development that were concerned about the future extension of the roads from their neighborhood into uh, the Pleasant Hill plat. <coughs> Public hearing was held at the Planning Commission meeting on November 2nd. Nobody showed up uh, and addressed the Planning Commission at the public hearing, which just goes to show the value of the neighborhood meeting in this particular case in being able to answer and address the questions and concerns of the neighbors at that time. Uh, the Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval of the preliminary plat and the rezoning. Um, the Parks, Recreation, and Natural Resources Committee met and, on November 1st, and they also unanimously recommended approval of the preliminary plat. Uh, they did ask the developer to work with city staff on the possibility of saving some additional significant trees along the south side of the development. Uh, we do have in the uh, staff reports a statement from the city forester who has reviewed uh, the stand of trees and the tree preservation on the property. Um, it is mostly elms and box el elders, which aren't particularly high quality trees, but uh, staff will work with the developer to see if there are some additional significant trees that can be saved in conjunction with the phases for the final plat. In summary, staff is recommending approval of the preliminary plat and the ordinance rezoning the property and adoption of the findings of fact. And I can stand for question. Item number 10 was approved by the Lakeville City Council. Next highlighted item on the agenda was item number 11, purchase agreement and lease for Kenrick Liquor Store property. And to give the background information regarding this agenda item is Assistant City Administrator, Alan Kennan. Right. Thank you, Mayor of City Council. Um, today we're gonna to take a look at the purchase agreement and lease that we've been working on with the Dreesen Group for the past several months. Um, just to refresh everyone where, what property we're talking about, it's the Kenrick Liquor Store it's in the northwest corner of 162nd Street and Kenrick Avenue. Uh, the store is currently at about 9,800 square feet, and it's about 2.11 acres of land that we're looking at selling to the Dreesen Group. So a little bit of history. We, the city was approached uh, in early 2016 by a developer looking at, at uh, the property, wondering if uh, there'd be an opportunity to expand on the property for his particular development. Staff took a look at the site and did find that there was some excess property um, on the, throughout the property, there was excess area for, for future development. Um, so in response to the request, the city uh, submitted a public RFP uh, request for proposals from developers to submit for developing the property into uh, additional retail spaces. Uh, we received four proposals um, that was submitted to uh, the City Council, the Liquor Committee, and the uh, Finance Committee for review. Uh, in particular, they looked at the purchasing price, the lease costs, and then the overall design of the four proposals that were submitted. Those three groups uh, requested staff to continue negotiations with the, with the Dreesen Group. Um, and through that process, uh, the City uh, worked with the Dreesen Group as well as the Liquor Committee over the past couple months to finalize a purchase agreement and a sale price of uh, 2.625 million, a 20 year lease, uh, leasing the liquor store space back at a rate of $19 per square foot. Um, the lease also includes a no rate increase for the first five years and a limited 7% increase every five years after that for the next uh, 15. And also um, the building will, the site will include uh, additional retail <coughs> of about a 1,300 square foot retail space on the north end and then additional 1,900 square feet on the south end with an additional 2,100 square feet attached onto that with a drive-through use. Uh, the developer is also proposing to redesign the parking lot to include stormwater, ba uh, stormwater infiltration basin as a rain garden as well as underground infiltration, um, some additional uh, dumpster enclosure space and um, is, is taking a look at actually sprinkling uh, the current liquor store site along with the new development. So 
the developer, along with working very well with staff and, and being a good partner in this, is also looking at doing some substantial investment in the property overall with our, our current building as well as uh, the overall site. Uh, Paul Stearns is here tonight with the Dreesen Group, uh, representing the Dreesen Group. And um, with that, staff recommends approval of the resolution for the purchase agreement and the lease. And we're available for any comments or questions. Item number 11 was approved by the Lakeville City Council. Well, those were the highlighted items presented to the council at their November 20th, 2017 meeting. If you have any questions or comments regarding these agenda items, please feel free to call City Hall. The number is 952-985-4400. Thanks for watching this edition of Lakeville City Council Wrap-Up.